What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. Before we made our way out of South Dakota, there were definitely some stops we wanted to hit. Um, some of it are things that we did last year when we were here, but we couldn't get the full experience because of COVID and everything being shut down. So we revisited some of those spots while we were here this time, and uh, we're definitely glad we did. Yeah. So in this video, we are gonna share with you six stops that we made uh, while we stayed in the Black Hills. Some of these are gonna be in the Black Hills, some are just outside the Black Hills, but definitely close enough to go visit uh, for a day trip. Right. So the first spot we went to is the Mammoth Site in Hot Springs. Yeah, so uh, the Mammoth Site, the Mammoth Dig Site down in Hot Springs uh, is an active Mammoth Dig Site right now. Um, it was closed when we were here last time. It was about 45 minutes from uh, Game Lodge Campground in Custer State Park. So close enough to definitely go down there uh, for the day. Pretty awesome spot. Um, it was actually, they discovered it in 1974 when they started to uh, clear the area out, they were gonna excavate uh, a big, uh, a large section of ground to put a housing development on. When they did, they started digging up bones. Um, once they did some more, some further investigation, um, they realized that uh, there were a tremendous amount of mammoth bones is what they were starting to uncover. So they stopped the housing development uh, and they actually started excavating the site uh, and it turned into what was now the mammoth, uh, the mammoth dig site. It's amazing when you walk through there. You know, you're actually looking at, you know, you're not looking at something that um, was, you know, something that they found somewhere else and brought into this location for people to view. I mean, you're uh, you're at the location uh, where all these mammoths are being currently being found and and they're discovering more every day. So, very very neat place, um, and would highly recommend stopping by and checking it out. And if you happen to be in the area in the summertime, they do offer a summer program for kids. It's a junior paleontology program where they actually teach the kids about digging for fossils and stuff. It sounds pretty cool. If we're ever back through there in the summertime, we'll definitely check that out. I'm sure Dylan would like that. Yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So the next spot we went to was Wind Cave National Park. So uh, Wind Cave National Park, again, it was closed last time we were in the area. So um, it's actually on the way back from the Mammoth site down at Hot Springs, you can actually uh, just come back on a route that will take you right through Wind Cave National Park. So that's what we did. Uh, we knew the visitor center was open this time. It wasn't open last time we were here. So we wanted to stop in there. We knew that the cave tours were still closed at the time that we were there. And uh, of course, uh, shortly after we left, that's they, they, the, the cave tours opened open back up on a, on a limited basis, uh, but they did open back up. Yeah, and the reason they were closed was a combination of the pandemic and for elevator repairs. Yeah, lots of elevator repairs. Yeah, so on the drive through, uh, we saw our first coyotes. Yep, um, three of them. Yep, we saw three coyotes kind of running across the field. They were uh, going across a kind of a, a area where there are a lot of prairie dogs. So apparently uh, coyotes really enjoy eating prairie dogs. Mm. So they were out there uh, running across that field and running across the snow. It was a pretty, uh, pretty neat sight to see. Then, you know, obviously there's bison there, uh, of course. So uh, then we come to the visitor center. We went in there and again, part of the visitor center was um, was blocked off. You know, you couldn't have access to the whole thing. You know, there wasn't a lot of people there. I'm not sure why they restrict access to certain areas, but at yeah. least it was open. Uh, yeah. At least we could see part of it inside there. So we did that and uh, got to see, you know, part of uh, Wind Cave National Park that way. Yes. So when I looked it up online, we saw that they are offering the tours on a first come first serve basis now. And I guess you can go at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., or 3 p.m. Yeah. And I think it's at 50% capacity. And also something noteworthy is that they do allow pets on some of the trails at Wind Cave. A lot of the national parks don't, but they do. And, and I third stop was Jewel Cave National Monument. So Jewel Cave National Monument, again, about 45 minutes from uh, Game Lodge Campground in the opposite direction of uh, the Mammoth Site in Hot Springs. 
So you basically uh, drive straight through Custer State Park, straight through Custer, and when you come out the other side, you just keep going, and uh, you'll you'll wind up down at Jewel Cave National Monument. The cave tours there were closed uh, due to an elevator construction project. Um, you know, we kind of knew being here in the off season, uh, that's the time of year when these places do maintenance, and if they have any projects they're working on, they do it obviously in, in the off season, so there's always a chance that you won't get to see or do, you know, everything that you're wanting to do. And uh, that, that again was the case at Jewel Cave, they were doing a, an elevator construction project. Um, and while they don't have a time frame for when they'll be done with that, they do expect it to continue through spring and early summer of 2021. But still a neat place to go. Uh, we walked around inside the visitor center. They kind of, it, it has a, a layout of the cave, um, a lot of information about the cave, about how large it is, about how it was discovered. And then uh, there's a lot of trails there that you can do. Uh, we decided to do the, uh, it's called the roof trail. So it was a very short hike um, around. It kind of leaves from the visitor center and takes you out uh, kind of along a ridge and then loops back around to the visitor center. Not a very long hike at all. And uh, gives you just some phenomenal views of the Black Hills. And uh, there, was, there was nobody there when we were there. So we kind of had that whole, uh, that whole area to ourselves very peaceful uh, just a, a really nice really nice hike kind of out and back yeah. around the around the visitor center there and, and something about that is really cool in the visitor center was and there was a tunnel you could crawl through with wind simulation what it felt like in the cave and i did that like two or three times that was pretty fun another thing to note is in the off season they're only open thursday through sunday from 8 30 to 4 30 and it says that they do close the gates promptly at 4 30 to make sure you're off the trails and everything like that so they're they're closed Monday through Wednesday um, didn't see any wildlife on the trail but when we left uh, as we were as we got back on the road we did see quite a few uh, mule deer out there so uh, there is a tremendous amount I mean there's a tremendous amount of wildlife everywhere in the Black Hills I mean everywhere we went you know whether it was in Custer State Park just driving on the highway I mean yeah. there's wildlife everywhere out here yeah. it's, it's one of the things we love so much about it uh, it's the fact that, you know, just going down to the store, you're probably going to see some kind of wildlife on the other side yeah. of the road. Uh, beautiful drive out there. Great little trail to hike. You know, if you don't have tons of time, we were there kind of later in the afternoon. So we didn't have a lot of time to spend, but definitely a good one to do. So those three things are in the Black Hills. So those are very, very close within 45 minutes of, uh, of Game Lodge Campground where we were staying. So the next three spots are a little further away. So they're about an hour and an hour and 40 minutes or so from Game Lodge Campground. So we just decided to make a day of it and knock all three of them out in the same day. Yeah. Yeah, because they are, while they're an hour and 40 minutes away, they're all three very, very close to right each other. Each other yeah. uh, and you can kind of make a loop and see all three. And Dylan, where's the first place we started? Wall drug. Wall drug. The infamous wall drug. Uh, recurring theme here, you know, um, wall drug was closed when we were here last time around. So now it's open. So we definitely wanted to stop by. Uh, Dylan was just blown away by the free the free ice water. Yeah, so I could we wanted just, to stop and get some wall drug free ice water. I could just stay there all day and drink free ice water. Um, you know, when you read the reviews on wall drug, we've all seen videos of wall drug. We, we you know, yeah. I mean, you kind of know what it is. The reviews are uh, kind of one end of the spectrum or the other. Um, you have the people that love it, that Think it's the best place ever a must stop have to stop there every time they're in the in the area and then you have the other people that say it's a hokey tourist trap <laughs> so um our thoughts on it it was kind of somewhere in between you know if you're someone that likes to do some shopping window shopping um pick up some souvenirs things like that it's a great place for that had a lot of different souvenirs from the black hills from badlands uh wall drug souvenirs so Water where I got my where I got my bison hat. So it had a pretty awesome uh, Black Hills, South Dakota hat, bison on it. Dylan was in in desperate need of a new bison hat. Yeah. Because the one he got last year when we were here from up in Deadwood. Yep. Um, it has it has just about been worn slap out. So yeah. Uh, so his favorite kinda, hat. So. So we kind of just used wall drug as um on a search to find him a new hat, and we were successful <laughs> with that and. He really enjoyed the um, free ice water. Yes. <laughs> so then we uh, moved on from there. Yep. So that's right, right off the highway. Easy, you know, easy stop there. Kind of a logical first stop on the way to 
Madlands. So Badlands National Park was up next. You know, you, you leave Wall and just head straight down the highway, and uh, you know, you're you're at Badlands National Park. We got to experience Badlands last year. We drove through it. Um, we did the Notch Trail, which was fantastic. Yes. Um, I, if you want to see how Dylan handled the Notch Trail last year, I'll leave a link uh, right above to that to that video. So there were two hikes that we wanted to do. Um, we got to the first one, which was a very short one, and that was the Window Trail. And it, so the Window Trail so is really short. It's a boardwalk, a great view at the and at the end. Definitely worth the three tenths of a mile walk. Super e e easy, e easy accessible for wheelchair. Super easy and super cool. Water. Yeah. So Dylan liked it because it was a boardwalk. Um, so we've been making him do some hikes in the snow and things, and uh, so having a nice boardwalk to walk on was uh, that was a welcome sight for sure. Yeah, and the fact that it was so short. Yes. Yeah, three tenths of a mile out and back. Um, yeah, so not very long. You can just about see the end of it from the parking lot. So, yeah. So not far at all. Not even really a hike. It's more yeah. of a just a walk out to an overlook. But uh, right. but the view was phenomenal. It was great. Um, yes. Definitely worth the short little you know short pull off there to uh, to get out and stretch your legs. So the next trail we were going to do was the door trail. It leads from the same parking lot. And the notch trail also leads from the same parking lot. And we then did this trail, but the castle trail leads from that same parking lot as well. So, uh, eight tenths of a mile couldn't be that bad, right? So, get ready to start going, going to it. And start, start off on a nice little short board walk. Got there, and then it pretty much mud. But it, we did, it was just so muddy, we did not even, we didn't even try it. We saw some other people doing it, but we were just like, not today. Yeah, um, so it starts off, like Dylan said, on a boardwalk. You get down to a certain point, and you get off the boardwalk, and you... Right. Um, there is some uh, some rocks you have to kind of scramble up and down and over uh, to, yeah. to go down the trail. So while it's only eight tenths of a mile, it's not very far. Uh, it is a little more of a rugged terrain hike. It was very very cold, like we said. Yes. It was very snowy and, and windy. Mm -hmm. You could see that some of that uh, some of that muddy area down there. Uh, there was ice on the rocks, so just you know did not look like something that we really wanted to tackle climbing over those rocks with ice on them and and take the chance on falling yeah, and mud everywhere yeah it was very very muddy it was just wet and icy and um we did see some a few people doing it and uh you know i'm sure it was an awesome hike yeah but we decided to take a pass on it we walked kind of down as far as we could on the boardwalk uh to another little overlook and i uh, got a view from there but um so we were a little bit a little bit bummed out that we didn't actually get to, to do that hike um, so we just kind of took that as a sign that uh, you know probably probably gonna go ahead and go ahead and call it a day on trying to do any hikes uh, and stop by the visitor center which we did and uh, this is the first visitor center we've been to that actually had um, like an LED sign above the door and it said it was basically if the sign was red then the visitor center was at capacity, you couldn't go in. You had to wait for people to come out, sign would turn green, then you could go in. Yeah. Um, so, the first one we've been to like that, a little bit different setup. Uh, they were obviously, again, limiting capacity. Certain areas inside blocked off that you couldn't access. Don't know why. Yeah, because you only know sense. people at a time. I mean, you already had the capacity reduced. Why block the rest of it off? Right. But, and there was a big yeah. visitor center too. If that yeah, there was a big visitor center in there. Uh, there would have been plenty of room for 15 people to spread out, you know, without being on top of each other. But it is what it is. Um, we still enjoyed it. Uh, we saw a tremendous amount of mule deer there this time. Uh, they were yes. all over the place by the visitor center down there, um, laying under the trees off the side of the road. As we left the visitor center, uh, there were a ton of mule deer on the sides of the road. I mean, we saw a few last time we were there. Um, Not the as many. But man, we saw a ton this time. There were mule deer everywhere. It was pretty cool for sure. Yeah, and the bottom line is, if even if you don't have time to hike or you decide not to hike, the Badlands is just a beautiful national park to drive through, and definitely worth it if you're just driving through the scenery and the wildlife. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, tremendous amount of overlooks you can pull off on. I mean, just um, 
you know you don't have to be there to hike uh, and, and I think that's one of the one of the neat things about Badlands is you you know you don't have to park and then hike for a long way to get to this spot where you can get this amazing view I mean you you get an amazing view the whole time you're driving through yeah. you know and any one of the pull-offs any one of the pull-offs they have um, you can you can pull off and just have a, a phenomenal view uh, incredibly windy which made it incredibly cold mm. so um, so we we didn't hop out at too many overlooks you know Badlands is a is an amazing place and you know as you're driving through there it's it's really like you just you landed on another planet and you're, and you're driving on another planet I mean it's it's amazing so as you leave uh, Badlands National Park on the way back out as you head back up to hop on the road to come back toward uh, Custer State Park there is a place that uh, some people may have heard of, maybe not. Yeah, and that one, the Minuteman Missile one. So uh, the Minuteman Missile National Historic Site basically uh, was built to kind of tell the history of what the Minuteman Missile Program was about. Uh, they had a tremendous amount of uh, missiles there in the ground out there in the in the prairie of South Dakota, and basically that's where a lot of the uh, a lot of the nuclear missiles were housed during the Cold War. Um, the, the site itself uh, inside, they have the museum inside there that really goes into detail about uh, how the program got started, why it got started, um, kind of chronicles uh, the arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union um, and really you know gives you a really good understanding and, and a really good idea of just how uh, how scared people were back then that that there was that there was going to be a nuclear war uh, between the U.S. and uh, the Soviet Union. I mean, it was uh, it was very stressful times, and you know I can't imagine uh, being one of those one of the two guys sitting down there that were waiting to get that phone call, uh, to knowing that that you would be launching missiles that would would most likely cause worldwide destruction. Um, pretty. Uh, be a pretty stressful job I think sitting there just waiting uh, waiting for that call luckily that call never came but if you're into Cold War history definitely a really cool spot yeah. to stop um, it's not a very large place yeah very small yeah and uh, you know they do have um, they do have tours at different times that will take you actually out to the missile silos and so uh, you can check into that we didn't do any of that we just stopped we just wanted to stop kind of see what it was about um, as we passed through the area there on the way back but uh, definitely worth a stop for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, anything, any kind of historical thing like that um, that you can stop and see just to get a better, uh, just a better perspective on, on how things used to be is, a, is definitely a worthwhile stop. Yeah. So that wraps it up. Uh, that's six stops, three very, very close to the Black Hills, three a little further away from the Black yeah. Hills, but those three are so close in proximity that they're an absolute, you know, absolutely can do in a day trip for sure. So, um, you know, we are definitely glad that we stopped at, at these six places while we were staying at Game Lodge Campground. Um, it was a great way to spend some time. You know, yeah. you, you learn, you know, you learn a, a ton of history, um, and getting to see these things firsthand really uh, puts a lot of that history that we've all read about in, in, a, in a whole different light and seeing it in a different perspective. So, uh, that's one thing we love so much about. You know, traveling full time like this is, you know, we get to go to go to all these places. Um, you know, I I enjoy history very much. Dylan's a big time, big time into history, <laughs> and uh, being able to see all these places that I read about when I was in school, and uh, finally get to see them, and then being able to show them to Dylan uh, versus just reading about them in a book is has been amazing. So uh, we're enjoying it, and uh, that. You know, that's going to just about wrap up all of our time here in South Dakota. We have one more short stay that we're going to make uh, up in Spearfish. Yep. So uh, that looks like it's going to be a pretty cool stop. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. be bringing that to you guys. But for now, that's going to do it. All right, guys. We appreciate you guys watching. And we'll catch you guys down the road.